Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'al Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hayyakum Allah jami'an Continue on in our study Wa shara sunnah lil imam al-muzani Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah We reach the portion of the treaties where imam al-muzani was talking about the father of mankind, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, and he said, Thumma khalaq al-Adam, Thumma khalaq al-Adam biyadihi, wa askanuhu jannatuhu, wa qabla thalika lil-ardi khalaqahu, wa nahahu ala shajira, qad nafadha qada'uhu alayhi ya'kilaha, ثم ابتلاه بما نهاه عنه منها ثم صلت عليه عدوه وأغواه عليها وجعل أكله لها إلى الأرض سببا فما وجد إلى ترك أكلها سبيلا ولا عنه لها مذهبا إمام Al-Muzni, Rahmatullahi Rahmatan Wasi'a, he said, he said, then he created Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, this is bayan, the i'tiqad of Ahl al-Sunnati, wal jama'ah, coming from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, then he uh, created Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, with his hand, and gave him uh residence or a place in paradise and before that he created the earth for him and he prohibited him from the tree verily his preordainment meaning the the qada the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to pass upon him and he ate from it meaning adam and a.s. Wasalam, he ate from the shajira he ate from the tree then he tried him with which he had prohibited him from then his enemy, meaning the shaitan, uh, overcame him and led him astray. And his eating from the tree was the cause of Allah placing him upon the earth. So he found no way to avoid eating from it, nor a way out from it. So meaning that all of this was according to the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many lessons that Ahl al-Ilm, the scholars, of Ahl Sunnah, they mention one of the, uh, or Imam Ahmed al Najmi, Rahmatin Wasiya, he mentions, he says, Aqul, he says, I say, Khalaq Allahu Adam bi yadihi, wa lam yubashir, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shayin bi yadihi, wa lam yubashir, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shayin bi yadihi, illa thalatha. So he said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, with his hand and that there was nothing else that he can, he, he did this directly. Okay, uh, there was nothing, uh, nothing in between his hand and the creation of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and it was nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do this, tabarak wa ta'ala. Uh, and then he he is over all things omnipotent subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said uh, Imam Ahmed he mentions Ahmed al-Najmi he says that uh, there's only three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as is mentioned in the Nasus meaning the Quran and the Sunnah uh, that he uh, created uh Mubashir like this, you know, uh, directly with his hand, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Khalaqa Adam bi yadi wa ketaba Torah, a Torah, li Musa bi yadi wa gharasa jenna adanin bi yadi. So he said, These three things in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did and created by his, uh, directly with his hand, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said he created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and he wrote the Torah, the 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 Torah 
of Musa alayhi salatu was salam with his hand tabarak wa ta'ala and he uh, he planted the gardens of Adenin of Jannah of uh, the gardens in Adenin were uh, in paradise with his hand subhanahu wa ta'ala and in surah al-baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he created Adam and gives us uh, insight into the story of our father, the father of mankind, alayhi salatu wasalam, about what happened and why he was expelled from Jannah and how the malaika, the angels, what they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard قال سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا وتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويصفك دماء ونحن نصبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة البقرة verse thirteen verse thirty he says that وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ And when your Lord said to the angels إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Verily I'm going to establish in the earth a khalifa, a successor. You know, one who is going to uh, be a ruler, if you will, over the earth. One to... to, to to uh, be in charge on, on the earth. The angels, they said, The angels said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said, are you going to establish on the earth Someone who will cause facade, they will cause the, the spread of wickedness on it, and they will spill blood. If we ponder at just that part of the ayah, we see that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine hikmah, and that's what we see is the sunnah of mankind. And that's why the malaika, they had knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them of Adam and the progeny of Adam, alayhi salatu wa salam. And how we would operate in the earth, that we would spill blood, that we would have envy and jealousy and hatred, and we would spread wickedness throughout the earth. Likewise, there is good, but mankind we see is greedy and lustful for power. We can hardly speak of a place on the earth where there isn't people who lust power and will kill, oppress, and die just for their power, even if they have all the wealth in the dunya. Countless, countless tales of the ancients, countless things that we wit witness today of how many people who love their position so much and they will kill anyone and do anything to remain in control and they spread wickedness throughout the earth in order to maintain their position. Even when they don't need it, even when they have everything they want, that's never enough. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the stomach of Bani Adam is, it's never satisfied until, you know, there's dust in it, until there's dirt in it, meaning that they're dead. Because of this thirst and this quest for position, status, and wealth, and power. Allah musta'an. So the malaika, they said, قَالُوا أَتَجَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُوا دِمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُصَبِّحُوا بِحَمْدِكُ نُقَدِّسُ لَكُ So the angels, they said, are you going to make in the earth, you're going to establish one who spreads wickedness in it, bloodshed, 
And we, we constantly say, subhanAllah, glorify you and praise you. Because that's the angels, as we mentioned in the prior chapter, that the malaika, they they don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unlike us, we constantly disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're created in toil and to toil and to struggle. And we are tested. And we fail in our often in our test just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when we know, even if we're on the straight path, we still commit so many sins. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is directly related to what we're talking about. We're talking about Adam and Salatu Salam, the father of mankind. The Prophet Salatu Salam let us know that all those who come after him, Alayhi Salatu Salam, the Prophet Salatu Salam said, Kuludnu Adam Khatta wa khayra khatayna tawabun. All the children of Adam sin. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So this is this is the status of many Adam. And that we will make mistakes, we sin, we oppress, we kill, we spread blood, and we, we do the most unjust things and spread wickedness throughout the earth. Wallahu musta'an. And Allah said, replied to them, Qala inni a'lamu wa la ta'lamun. Verily, I know that which you do not know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and uh, created mankind, created the malaika, Created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and all of this was according to his divine hikmah. It's according to his divine hikmah, and Ahlul Sunnah makes taslim to those nasus. Look at this. Ahlul Sunnah, they are comforted by this, this text. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he said, Qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. Verily, I know that which you don't know. If we reflect upon that, then we won't have to worry about what the philosophers and what, what people have become misguided from Ahla, uh, uh, Ahla Bid'ah when they question the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they question, well, why is this? Why can't we just have peace and stability? What about the children of Syria and the children of Afghanistan? Why were those children bombed? Why was this one starved? Why was this one? Because this is from the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he, Tabarak wa ta'ala, says, inni a'lamu, Verily, I know that which you do not know. So Allah tests us. These are tests. And it's heavy on the heart when we see uh, oppression, when we see hurt, and when we experience pain, we lose our own children, we lose our parents, we lose this. All of this is from the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation of Adam and Isa alayhi salam and his expulsion from Jannah to the earth is, was a test. It was a test for Adam and Isa alayhi salam and it is a part of the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Imam Ahmed al-Najmi he says, well, muhim. He said, and the most important thing, and Allah khalaqahu lil ard, walau lam yukun kadalik ma ja'ala umrahu muqdaran bi sinin, fakana umrahu alf sana, makatha mi'atain wa khamsin sana fi sama. So, Imam Ahmed and Najmi Rahmatullah he said, Verily Allah created him, created Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, for the earth, and this is the, the goal of uh, some of the Salaf used to say this. And he said, And if this wasn't the case, he wouldn't have made most of his his time on the earth that, that was decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to be on the earth most of his life. Most of his life was in 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 this life, in, in this world, on this earth. And his age was 1,000 years, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he stayed in paradise 250 years. So this lets us know that Imam Ahmed was using this to, to uh, this point to say that, you know, Adam alayhi salatu salam, he was created primarily to live in this world, in, the, in uh, his life on, on the earth. And that those examples, and that that was a part of the divine decree and wisdom of Allah subhanahu 
wa ta'ala. And this is a statement of some of the Salaf, is that they used to say, خلق الله آدم للأرض وذلك أنه سئل هل خلق الله آدم للأرض أم للسماء فقال بل للأرض And this is a narration أخرجه أبو داود عن خالد الهداء So this is a narration And this is how this shows us how some of the Salaf that they uh, viewed this mas'ala and that how they how they looked at this. You know, was Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, was he created to dwell in paradise? He was created, uh, you know, mainly to dwell in, in the earth. And so they deduce from the nusus, from the text, that he, alayhi salatu wasalam, was created for the earth because that's where he spent most of his time. And then, of course, his seeds, which is us being the children of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, was spread in all the tests and all the trials and tribulations. And the Shaykh mentions, Imam Ahmed <coughs> Najmi, he mentions that there was maslaha, there was a, some of the maslaha, some of the, the wisdom and the rectification or that came about from this being expelled from Jannah is number one to know that the end result for those who uh, differed with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning for, for disobedience to, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is a punishment that there is a, a recompense uh, that will be paid back for how we lived in this life. And as we mentioned prior, that one of the statements of the Salaf is they used to say that uh, a dunya, uh, a dunya, uh, dar al amal, will jannah dar al jaza. That this life is the life of doing deeds, doing righteous deeds. And paradise is or, or or the hereafter is the dara jaza it's the time for recompense so meaning that if you lived good in this life and you did good deeds then in the hereafter of course you're going to be uh rewarded for that and if you were of the believers and you did these good deeds then you'll be you know you're you're uh, abode will be Jannah and if you disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you did good deeds those deeds will be like dust in the wind they won't be meaningless because you didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your abode will be Jahannam may Allah protect us all from the hellfire I mean and guide us and our families our Muslim and non-Muslim families I mean Ya Rabbil Alameen and so that is the first maslaha or, or um, positive, if you will, for creating the, uh, you know, for Adam and Esau to Islam being expelled from paradise. He mentioned another thing. He said also another benefit of this, if you will, is that in order to clarify who the enemy is, of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was or mankind in general and who is that? it's the shaitan the devil and the devils how many devils are there how many devils are there in the world in so many ways to misguide us so many ways so many people are trapped and become trapped and we get tested daily from the traps and enticements of the shaitan so one of the part of that divine hikmah is to clarify who your enemy is. And it's the shaitan with all of his evil. How many people worship the shaitan? Directly, especially in the entertainment industry and otherwise, directly, I mean, sujood, everything you can imagine, making statues, things we can't even imagine, pledging their souls for just something beseech in the dunya. So the 
by Adam and Isla being spelled, this clarified who the enemy of Allah is and who the enemy of mankind is. And it's the devil and his soldiers. Wallah uh, Mustaan. The next, uh, another hikmah or another maslaha or uh, positive, I guess you will, of of. Adam alayhi salatu salam being spelled is to also illustrate the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that kulli shay bi qadrullah everything is by the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, 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 and that Adam alayhi salatu salam he was expelled to the uh, to the earth and that he and his progeny would be in a constant battle and involved in the battle between haq and batil between truth and falsehood and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not la yudhi'u ahl al haq and that Allah will never abandon the people of truth nor, nor will he leave them without clarifying and giving them the the uh, proofs of what they do in the khayr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَمَا, وما كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُذِلَّ قَوْمًا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَاهُمْ حَتَّ يُبَيْنَ لَهُمْ مَا يَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, verse uh, 115 he subhanahu wa ta'ala says and the law does not uh, misguide a people after he has given them guidance until he clarifies for them what it is to have taqwa you know what it is that they need to fear so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know and establishes the hujjah. He establishes the proof and the evidences for us to follow. إِمَّا شَاكِرٌ وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Either we will be thankful and grateful or we will be disobedient and ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the state and the status of uh, the children of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. Some of the benefits that our Shaykh Shaykh uh, Ubaid al Jabri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentions uh, in, in regards to this portion of the treaties about our father Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, he mentions that what we learn from this portion of Imam of Muzani's treaties is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أن الله خلقه بيده وهذا دليل على وجوب الإيمان بصفة يد لله ويرد على من أول يد بقدر. So he said that this is evidence, you know, this part of the treaties and the verses uh, that are mentioned in this uh, section of the treaties. First is evidence that Allah the Almighty has created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam with his hand, tabarakah wa ta'ala. And that is evidence that it's an obligation, meaning that this is the itaqad of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that it's an obligation to believe in the characteristic that Allah, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has. A hand, tabarak wa ta'ala, as he mentioned. And it is a refutation of those people, ahla ta'wil, okay, the, like the Asha'ira and many other groups that explain away the meaning of yad, the meaning of hand. So instead, they can't accept 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hand, even though he tabarakatala says, and the Prophet وسلم, did these are uh, sifa, sifat, or this is a sifa that's established in, in, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they cannot accept that because they feel that it makes a resemblance between the creator and the creation. Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah says yes, that both of them are named Yad. I have a Yad. This is my hand. But my hand is unlike the Yad or the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, no there's no comparison. And we don't make a comparison. So there's no create there's nothing in the creation like unto him, and he does not resemble his creation, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. But they're both called Yad. But the cave, the how, we don't uh, describe because we don't know how the kafiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is yad, but we just know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hand because he says, Bel Yadahu. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says rather his, his his you know he describes his hand yadahu so al sunnah believes in this sifa and al sunnah describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he describes himself as we mentioned in the earlier uh, lesson and Ahl Sunnah operates by the Qaeda, the 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 principle that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has this established in the Quran. Qala Subhanahu Wa Taala fi Kitabi Al Kareem, ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير. There is nothing which is like him. So there, there's the nothing. We negate that there's a resemblance between the Creator and His creation. So don't say Ahl Sunnah is mujassima, that they are those who, uh, you know, relegate a body and a body like uh, the creation and things like this. this is a, these are open lies. They don't want to do research into what Ahl Sunnah believes, but instead they make istidlal from their hawa. They make and base evidence and slanders based on their desires. And their hatred for the for Ahlul Sunnah, because it just doesn't fit well and sit well with their intellect. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Laisa kamitlihi shay." There's nothing like him. So we could probably we can both agree to that with the, with uh, the Ashuris and Ahlul Sunnah. We can both agree to that. Wahuwa Samiyah and Basir. And he is the all hearing and all seeing. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed. He's negated that there is a resemblance between him and the creation. And he has affirmed that he has hearing and sight. And the creation has hearing and sight. How do we understand that? We understand that that we know that his hearing and sight is unlike ours. Because he is al Samir. He is al Basir. He hears everything, he sees everything. But that ta'wil is deep in their hearts and they infer from it and make false assertions. So this uh, shows us uh, and is an affirmation of that sifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shaykh goes on to mention some more in-depth arguments, but will in our study of this part portion of the treaties with that and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad